In Azeroth, every monster has a story. Yes, even the ones you don't think twice about killing when taking your first steps in this gigantic world. So draw your bows, ready your swords, and drink your mana potions as we talk about some of the interesting stories the monsters, the Alliance, want dead in Classic WoW. Run! We'll start off with the ultimate annoyance of the Alliance, Kobolds. These little rat bastards have infested the mine shafts in places like Elwyn Forest and Loch Madan. Kobolds are cowardly, flighty creatures, but what they lack in courage, they make up for in numbers. Kobolds are known to breed like rabbits and tend to stick to dwelling beneath the earth. These creatures are most well known for being super protective of their candles, which are made out of earwax, on their heads, which help light their way through the dark tunnels they lurk in. They're also dumb, really dumb. In High Mountain, there's a group of kobolds called the Blue Wax who use the skulls on their heads to identify leadership. Well, if any race puts a skull on their head, they believe it's their leader. So uh, yeah, they're pretty stupid. These creatures have been a thorn in the human side ever since they first settled in Lordaeron and will probably continue to be a pest but probably never a full-blown threat. So yes, these little buggers deserve to be exterminated, but in the Jasperlode mine, they have a fate worse than death. Within the mine, there are countless kobolds, bound in spiderwebs, awaiting to be feasted upon by the Mother Fang. This isn't really lore-related, I just wanted to show you guys this because it is just absolutely horrifying to me. And easily one of the most creepiest parts of Classic WoW that people don't really talk about that much. <laughs> what? Who's there? Moles are ferocious and barbaric races of hyena-like dog people known for being marauding bandits around the Eastern Kingdoms, and they are a much bigger threat than the kobolds. 75 years before the First War, aka that's when the orcs showed up, there was another war, the Knoll War. The humans of Stormwind were in an intense conflict between the Knolls. The leader of the Knolls was called Pack Leader Garfang and him and his legion of gnolls attacked farms, convoys, villages, and even a full-scale attack on Stormwind at some point. The war was ended when King Barathan Wren and a small party of knights traveled to Red Ridge to slay Garfang. The removal of the gnoll leader caused the rest of the savage beasts to fight each other instead to try and claim power. But despite the war being over, gnolls have still continued to be a threat among the Alliance since then. Their culture is what you'd expect, they're a bunch of cannibalistic savages, and the strongest one is the leader. For the Riverpaw pack, the strongest member is Hogger, and rumor has it that he's been conspiring with the Defias Brotherhood, who has been equipping them with weapons, magic, and strategic leadership to defeat their common enemy, that is the Alliance. So. Let's take care of business. Get over here, you son of a bitch! Whew, there we go, much better. Trogs are by far the most ancient enemy we'll be talking about in this video, but that doesn't mean that they're the smartest. Back long, long ago, when the Titan Keepers were hanging out on Azeroth, they wanted to create the first Titanforged race to help assist them in creating and maintaining Azeroth. At the Forge of Wills, they made their first prototype, the Trogs, and well, their first design, it kinda sucked. Bruh, look at this dude. <laughs> Oh, 
top of his head. <laughs> Look at his lips. <laughs> they were stupid, they had goofy proportions, and were far too untamed to actually protect Azeroth and the Titan Keepers refined their design and crafted the Urban Race instead. The Keepers could not bring themselves to destroy the Trog, so they just locked him up in stasis chambers in places like Oldaman. But oh god, oh no, oh, oh god, who's that? It's, it's yogg Saron, and he just enacted the Curse of Flesh to turn all of the Titan Forge creations into fleshy monsters so they can be easily corrupted. So now, trogs are these gross, boil-covered, hairy, caveman-like monsters, and the Earthen are now dwarves. So basically, they're the same thing. Thousands of years later, dwarven excavation teams dig up Titanforge strongholds and waves upon waves of trogs poured out of the ground and are hellbent on taking over the eastern kingdoms after being caged up for far too long. Their preferred mode of travel is digging through the ground and the artificial vibrations coming from the technologically advanced city of Nomergon attracted many of the feral trogs and they dug through the earth to find the source. I won't get in depth with the story of Nomergon, but I cover most of the history in this video. Thankfully, trogs have stayed in the middle region of the Eastern Kingdom, so they are mainly just a problem for the gnomes and the dwarves, but keeping them unchecked is a recipe for disaster, so culling the population in places like Den Moreau or Loch Modan is an important quest for any Alliance adventurer. Murlocs are the quintessential race when people think about WoW. So surely they must have a lot of lore, right? Well, uh, no, no they don't. Murlocs are an ancient race, said to be around since the trolls, but they pass off all of their history through word of mouth, and they speak a language called Nurglish, and it's indescribable for anybody that doesn't understand the language, and it doesn't help that they're also hostile to any race that isn't a murloc for the most part. The only other race that speaks this language are the Makura, who are these Sebastian-looking dudes that you find on the shores of Azeroth sometimes. Because murlocs are such an ancient race, they have lots of offshoot evolutions that we can spot around Azeroth. So for example, the Gorlocks are the Arctic version, there's the deep sea murlocs that are like angler fish type evolutions that reside deeper in the sea, and the Jinyu actually used to be murlocs, but were transformed into the much more sophisticated beings that they are today because of the Veil of Eternal Blossoms. They're probably the smartest race on this list, but they're also pretty stupid when compared to other sophisticated races. But they trade, they have society, they hunt, they gather, and they aren't cannibals like all the other races we've talked about on this list. Murlocs tend to worship sea creatures that are stronger than them. So that might be a bigger murloc, it might be a shark, it might be a naga, or it might even be an old god-related being. Murlocs also draw heavy inspiration from the Deep Ones from H.P. Lovecraft, who are basically just murlocs, but a lot more terrifying. But murlocs make up for their lore with something that they have an abundance of. And that's merchandise, baby! They got hoodies, they got plushies, they got leggings, plushies, mugs, shoes, more plushies, backpacks, Funko Pops, GET MORE PLUSHIES ON THE GODDAMN SCREEN! Kigurumis, statues, Mr. T statues, alarm clocks, pins, just everything! Get all the merch on the screen! Get all the merch on the screen right now! And that's the end of today's episode. I hope you enjoyed it, like it if you did, and subscribe if you want to see content similar to this, and let me know if you want any other lore covered so you can answer the question on why you want them dead. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.